Hello and welcome. My name is Nilo. This is the second installment of our base in the book tutorial series, where we'll be this time looking at power. You could say that power should come before our previous one on the initial assemblers. However, in terms of just getting the ball rolling on the initial assemblers, you can get, get by with just about anything in terms of what you need to build. However, after just a single steam engine connected to a single uh, oiler, it's time to scale it up. So let's start with some of the basics of steam power and then go into some hints in this regard. The very basic part of it is that it requires, not surprising, a pump. Now this pump pumps 1200 water per second and that is enough to fuel. All right, hold on. Let will just go step by step. That goes into one of these bad boys. This is a boiler. It takes water in here in these ends and it puts steam out here if, if it has fuel. Great. And then that has to be the steam is fed into steam engines. Steam engines need steam and obviously, and they generate power. So they need to be connected to a power network like this one is. So basically we take water in Add some coal, it boils, steam comes out. Can One of these boilers can feed two steam engines. One of these pumps can feed 20 boilers and therefore also 40 steam engines. So my recommendation is when you build it, make sure you build it so that it can be easily scaled up as your power increases. That means first thing is you need to find a place where there's a decent amount of space up here. Great, that's the first part. Then the second part is and this is actually one of the key things that I find in this setup. If you, for example, build the first one like this and just say, all right, that's perfect. Oops, like this. Ah, that's perfect. And then you just drag this one in here. Then you're starting to get into trouble with, all right, so what, do I, what am I going to do with the coal leading other directions? So therefore, Instead of, instead of also building it and then getting the coal in from the top side, which means you need to move the coal every time you expand. So my suggestion is always taking the coal from the water side. That means from this perspective, you build an underground to get some room. Now, additionally, now I just need to measure. I would always build two at the same time. The reason for me to build two at the same time is because it's not particularly much diff much more difficult. And by building two at the same time, you are ready for expansion. Then you just stamp down more blueprints. And this is kind of the objective of this uh, tutorial series is to create blueprints that are ready to use. It's very, very simple because I only have one. This little thing here, pop it down. Look how well it fit. Let's populate it and we'll uh, drag in the coal afterwards here. And there's a reason you can take the underground by underground belt all the way in, but I choose not to do this. The reason why I choose not to do it is because then I have one module here, one steam module that I can keep going because this steam module fits exactly on the next one. So they are perfectly aligned. That's why I choose to do it this way. just need the power and of course light is not mandatory but in my basis light is mandatory so i always i, I always i try to include the lights in the, my blueprints as well so this is one power steam power unit you can see this one it is i'm putting maximum output is 900 kilowatts so that's 3.6 Kilowatts. This is seven, seven milliwatt, seven megawatts produced here, and it goes in, and goes up. Once that's operational, you of course have the issue, and this is one of those uh, I would say more like religious constraints or more like religious questions. Do you use energy inserters or do you use burner inserters? There is all there is an argument for each. My take on it is. Well, let's go through the pros and cons. The negative part of the 
electrical inserters is that if this starting to not keep up, then the power drains and they will be inserting slower. By inserting slower, you'll be sort of circling the drain and getting into a continually worse situation power-wise. That's not good. The burn inserters, they are well, they're less efficient. They also consume some of it. However, the problem with the burner inserters is that if they run out and the belt runs out, they cannot kickstart themselves. So you need to go in and put, I mean, they start with a bit of fuel in them, but if this fuel gets used, then it will not be able to, even if there's something on the belt, it will not be able to pick it up. And I find that to be a bigger disadvantage. Hence, I use the electrical ones. And then from here on, you see this power unit, this can just be scaled up. That's uh, two, three. Good thing we have deconstruction planner at hand. It's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's this is what can be supported by these two pumps. So it's actually quite a lot, and you can. At this point, you need to scale it up to a yellow, a red belt in order for it to keep feeding this line. It's very important. You can also get more belts, but in that case, remember to scale up the coal or switch to some better products such as solid fuel. In any case, that's a very, very easy way to get the power going. Let's not zoom in on this level. Power is up and running. We have everything we need. So there you have it. And the blueprint is, of course, available in the description below. So hope you like this very, very clean, easy way of setting up power and continue to set it up so it can be scaled. Thank you very much for joining. I hope to see you in another tutorial. Bye.